So I had the conversation with my children and explained to them uh, why and how black people are viewed in the UK. Now, why or where does this sort of racism come from? That is the main question. And the way I look at it are two elements, really. Um, the analogy which I like to give is uh, when you sneeze, okay, you automatically uh, generally say, oh, bless you to somebody. You see someone sneezing, you say, bless you, okay? Uh, when you ask somebody, oh, why do you say bless you? A lot of the times they don't really know why they say bless you. It's just a habit. It's something what you do. Those who are a bit more mindful know that it comes from the time of the Black Plague over like you know, 500 years ago, yeah, when Europe was being ravished and devastated by their own sort of Ebola, uh, Ebola sort of crisis, yeah, uh, and people were just dying. And one of the first indications that you had the plague was you sort of sneezing, having those symptoms of sneezing. So when you saw someone sneezing, you would automatically say, God bless you, hope you get through this, yeah. Now, over the years and the histories and the centuries, that has filtered down within to our culture. It's not taught in schools. It's not taught in the church. Okay, it's just simply filtered through the, I would say, the collective uh, social psyche of the nation. That when someone sneezes, you say, "God bless you." Okay. Now, when we go back to the time of slavery, okay, not so much when uh, Europeans first had contact with uh, Sub-Saharan Africans, but more in regards to the actual slave trade itself. Okay, but you needed a way in which to justify treating people the way you are treating them. When you're treating people like animals, you have to come up with a number of myths and and and, and stereotypes and labels uh, to justify your actions to your inhumanity to man. Okay, and uh, over as you know, slavery was over a period of 400 years, which is substantially longer than the Black Plague. And so it was imbued in the psyche of people, many people who have no sort of uh, contact uh, with uh, black people and just heard about it, okay? So essentially, uh, you know, given the, 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 you know, the amount of time that slavery was within the cycle, and even though uh, uh, most of the population in the UK didn't have any contact with black people, okay, it's the myths which they've heard about that continent, the dark continent, if you like. Uh, that has been built into the national psyche as to how they actually view black people. And it's viewed in the negative. Now, from my understanding in uh, America, for example, uh, even after slavery, you had the John Crow laws, whereby uh, it was um, a way in which the state and the system uh, would uh, incarcerate black people for minor infringements or you know, of the law, sometimes no infringement of the law, Okay, simply to uh, put them in prison, put them in the chain gang, and uh, c let them continue like act and be like slaves. Okay, and so therefore you, you create this myth of uh, the association with being black and crime. Okay, because if you're looking out for people to make minor infringements uh, of the law. Okay, simply because you want to incarcerate them to get economic benefit from them. Okay, you create a whole sort of mindset that. Black equals crime because that is profitable for you to incarcerate black guys in America. To a certain degree, I think that's still going on. The high percentage of people, black people in prison, like it was in the UK, that the, the high percentage of black people who are in prison, the high percentage of black people who are in mental institutions, the high percentage of black people who are unemployed. Okay, so uh, it is imbued in the uh, national psyche uh, this concept and idea that. Uh, uh, black people are somehow inferior to white people. When you read the reports of colonial officers, for example, who were operating in Nigeria, uh, they would sell, tell you, especially on contact with the Yoruba people uh, in the uh, Nigerian area, just how intelligent black people were. And they made it in no, uh, 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 no doubt. You know, in the Yoruba uh, nation, uh, the high percentage of people have got sort of degrees, etc., especially here in the West, okay? But that's by the by, that doesn't fit into the narrative, okay? Um, so let's, one of the problems with, in the UK is the way in which they subtly try to hide their racism. And they would love to talk about this concept of this big so-called skinhead. Uh, people say that, don't even really know 
where skinheads even come from, what the scar music, etc. But this concept of the skinhead with the braces, the Dr. Martin boots, shouting out abuse uh, to people. Uh, recently, there's been a lot of st stuff said about racism in football, which is total deflection. And John Barnes said it really, really well. Uh, when he said that, it's just a wider reflection of society. Why aren't you addressing the real issues? Just because you know, when someone calls you a, a nigger or a wog, coon, a black, whatever, okay, that's one thing. At least you know where you stand. But that is not the British way, and especially within the bourgeoisie. And I'm saying the bourgeoisie because they are the worst type of racists, okay? These are the people who wouldn't dream of calling you a, a, a name. They simply just w w refuse to sit next to you uh, or on the underground or uh, refuse to uh, uh, speak or acknowledge you, maybe on a school run, or they would refuse to employ you, <laughs> more importantly, okay? Um, they don't have any black friends as such, and the ones what they do are like tokenism, etc. Uh, and they, to me, pe perpetuate the worst type of uh, uh, racism which I, 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 I've seen and experienced. Uh, I like to use the phrase, uh, don't call me Scarface. And what I mean by that is that if you could imagine that someone uh, maybe went into a fire to rescue their children, etc., and they came out with horrific, horrific burns, you know, like maybe Simon Weston, etc., come out with really horrible burns, and your whole face is totally, really horrible, uh, scarred up, okay? And then you, you, but your eyesight is perfect and you walk around from different groups of people and each time you meet a new group of pe people, you will see the physical reaction on their face as they see your scarred face, which is like, you know, and then it was like, sometimes it would be like a split second of surprise, but because they've been taught as a child not to stare, etc., they quickly sort of correct themselves and then act as though there was nothing wrong uh, with your face or anything like that and pretend to try and, well, that's exactly uh, what a black person experiences. Many black people experience, yeah. That initial uh, look of surprise sometimes on somebody's face when they wasn't expecting you to be black. And then it's the masking of that surprise. Forgetting, of course, that you are the constant in this equation as you go from group to group to group to people. Some people do not present those sort of things. But it's as obvious as that when you see it as a black person, okay? Uh, now... What do I mean by that? Well, take London, for example. Over the years, I've, I've been in London for too many years, most of all my life, really, except for times when I was posted abroad, etc., or studied abroad. And uh, But London has changed dramatically, especially the demographics uh, of the people who live in there. And it's supposed to be one of the most diverse uh, capitals in the Western uh, world. Yeah, It's like every nationality, even when you go on the bus now, it's very rare you're going to hear Cockney, for example. Yeah. Uh, but nonetheless, when you go on the website, say, of the uh, financial institutions in the city, uh, and you and you go to the website and you say, meet the team, that diversity is not reflected. It is not reflected in the staff of these companies, in these organizations. Now, I recently went for uh, an interview, um, a couple of interviews, actually, um, whereby it was just so plain, yeah? The scenario usually is that you would send your CV in, yeah, uh, because I'm half Jamaican, half Nigerian, and I carry uh, my uh, Jamaican side, which is uh, a slave name, uh, then an Anglicised slave name, well, <laughs> what does I say, Scottish, because a lot of black people from the West Indies tend to carry Scottish names, okay, it's history behind that, okay, so when they see my CV, and they see my qualifications, and they see the sort of things that I've done, and they can't get me in there fast enough. Sometimes when we're talking on the phone, for example, it's like, yeah, great, come in. And nine times out of 10, you come in and the shock on their face, which is of course masked, first of all, and that interview will just go downhill, pan. I had one guy saying, you know, I, you know, I, I hear what you're saying, you've got all the skills, obviously shown that you're very intelligent, you know, You've got you know, a degree or whatever. You have two uh, uh, investment advice diplomas. Uh, you've been uh, in the city for many uh, years working in private equity. You used to uh, operating with sort of senior uh, uh, sort of executives, etc. It's just that I don't visualize you in a situation in meeting our particular clients because 
our clients are so much more different than all the other people you may have met in the past. I mean, I just, can you visualize it? I can't visualize it. You're like, what the heck? What are you talking about? Yeah, let's just call a spade a spade. Yeah, we're still on that sort of track. It's ridiculous. It's embarrassing. It's very, very embarrassing. I mean, I'm of an age now, which, you know, looking, you know, I'm of an age whereby I'm still yet to see many. I can count on one hand the amount of black managers, black directors, not their own companies, but black directors of other companies. OK. Um, you know, in, in a situation, in a work environment. You, you just don't see many black managers. And why would that be the case? Well, I think a lot of times the case is because it's the whole concept of some black man telling white people what to do. They're just very adverse to that idea. You know, for some reason, it's got nothing to do with meritocracy at all. It's got everything to do with a perception as to where a black person's place is. Now, the figures bear this out to some degree because uh, people from uh, African, for example, uh, backgrounds tend to have a... a uh, more sort of degrees, uh, higher education, etc. Uh, but graduates themselves, uh, from uh, black graduates, uh, tend to get jobs which are paid uh, less, substantially less than you know their uh, white uh, compatriots, yeah, or pay peers, yeah. It's uh, it's difficult. When I was in the army uh, back in the day, in the uh, in the eighties, uh, for example, uh, racism in the army was. Uh, quite horrendous. I remember being a 16 year old junior gunner and when asked uh, by one of the junior sergeants, sorry, one of the sergeants who's going to be the next uh, you know, promotion, everyone in my group sort of pointed to me. Um, uh, uh, they said Chalky is going to be promoted next. Can you believe that was my nickname at the time? Well, I didn't mind it that much. Uh, and the sergeant turned around and said, Well, no nigger in my troop is going to get promoted. I said to him, well, it doesn't bother me. It was, you know, I'd rather join the French Foreign Legion. Being promoted in Junior Leaders Regiment, Royal Horse Artillery, or Royal Artillery is of no great uh, consequence. Uh, surprisingly, I did get promoted, uh, but that's another story, okay? Uh, but during, the, you know, there's times when I was in the Army, when I was in Airborne Forces, and doing a parachute jump, and people were actually refusing to check my equipment when I'm up in the train, uh, up in the plane, about to do a night jump, okay? I uh, had a, a, a situation where one of my troop commanders, who really got on well, uh, and it was so obvious that myself and a couple of others, guys who were uh, blacks, should have been promoted, and uh, it was only when he came out of the, the army, and I worked for a financial uh, company, and he happened to be working in that company, and he made a point, a beeline, to say he wanted me to work with him. And I said, well, look, sir, you know, if, if you... Really, Steve, if you felt that you want me to work with you, why was it you, you didn't promote me when I was in the army? And, and his answer was that he wanted to promote me, but the powers that be prevented him from doing so. That was a little bit of a revelation, a bit of a revelation. That racism, uh, what you experience, it goes all the way up the chain. And so when you see people, for example, on the left, maybe Antifa or whatever, uh, they're talking about, you know, anti-racism this and that that's just not the case yeah a lot of them are racist they have a perception as to what a black man should be what a black man should think etc and if you don't uh, fulfill that perception then you know you've sold out for example it's just a tough crack basically it's a tough crack um that's it really it's my little wings if, if, you, if you've got any comments about it etc it wasn't greatly scripted uh, but uh, if you've got any comments you want to mention anything about it then just write comments down below and subscribe for any any more um but uh yeah bye for now <laughs> oh yeah and uh by the next video should hopefully i should have had my hair cut <laughs>